I'm Jay Deere. I've been on top of Utah's real estate market for over 10 years. I will show you things about this market that you never knew. So we get many calls every day from our clients uh, looking for us to help them design uh, various types of structures for their outdoor needs. Uh, right now we're working on a project that's quite unique, a little bit more large. Uh, they wanted a, a, a barn or more of a, a garage structure there in their backyard. And when we met with them, it was determined that a pavilion uh, would better suit their needs. So we've got our senior project manager, Mark, that's working on this project. Let's go get an update and see where we're at. Hey Mark, can you give us uh, an update on the Green Pavilion? Yeah, sure. I met with the owners the other day and this is the design we came up with. We, okay. you know, they wanted a pavilion, so we went with the pavilion. They have a pool that sits on this end of okay. their uh, pavilion and they wanted that for a seating area, just a little bit of shade. They'll put their lounge chairs right, right here underneath it. So okay. they love the design. Um, looking good. All right, so are we ready to put this into production then? Um, actually, we're not. I got the numbers back from the engineer and after he ran his calculations, okay. um, several of our support beams that hold this structure up are gonna have to be upsized dramatically. Uh -huh. And it's changing the costs on this project about $10,000. Wow. Um, the owners do not have the budget for that, so we need to go back to the drawing board figure out something that's gonna work for okay. the owners on well, this. Oh yeah, let's let's get working on that then uh, so we can move this into production. Okay, I'll let you know what we figure right. out. Yeah, keep me posted, thank All right. you. Hey Brad, I just got an update from the engineer on the green project. Okay. He said that if we will um, shrink that thing up a couple feet each direction, that that'll only change two or three of the support beams that we were talking about. Do you want me to get a cost back to the owner on that? If or? it's just the, that ridge beam, I think we ought to just cover the cost on this one, so. Okay, great. Okay, uh, the other thing is uh, they, he did pay for a, a, the concrete patio to be the original size and even though we're shrinking up the pavilion, it'll allow them to have a walkway around that side. Okay, great. And we don't have to adjust that either. Great, I love that. Okay. All right, thanks. So in Market in a Minute today, we're gonna to talk a little bit about more in detail about the 2014 market forecast. Now these are important numbers that we look at to kind of figure where things are going and I think it's important uh, for the consumers to understand. They're expecting uh, an increase in property values this year between five and 7%. That's very good. The reason why is all the jobs that are coming in into town. And compared to 2012, 2014 is expecting to have four times the amount of people coming into the state versus leaving the state. That's very big. That means that our property values are going to increase. So when they break that down, when you see a five to seven percent increase, they break it down into Salt Lake's expected to get about a seven percent increase. Provo should expect a, about an increase at about six percent, and then Logan and Ogden are going to probably see about a five percent increase. And so that's kind of a breakdown. More jobs means uh, property values are going to go up as there's more demand, and that's your market in a minute. and no one likes to do it. It should be an adventure, and we here at Wasatch Moving Company make it one. We are 
that extra bit of help that everyone needs. Let us take the stress out of moving for you with our excellent and careful staff and our flat rate affordable pricing. Call Wasatch Moving Company today, the official movers of Real Estate Essentials with J. Deere on ABC. budgeting your kitchen appliances, a guideline that we use is 2 to 3 percent of your home value. If you spend less than that, you risk bringing down the value of your home with your selection. If you spend more than that, you'll certainly love what you have, but you do run the risk of not getting it back in resale value. Your buyer will like you, but they might not necessarily pay you more. Once you've decided on your budget, a good way to start is ask yourself, what's the one thing you love to do and the one thing you can't stand? Start with those appliances and make your budget. As an example, if we had a baker that really didn't like washing dishes, we would start out with a wall oven and we'd get a dishwasher that you absolutely didn't need to pre-wash dishes and could go straight from the table to the dishwasher. We all have compromises that we need to make on our budgets. And we like to make those on the things that matter to you less and the other elements. So continue our look at the Parade of Homes. This week we're looking at Utah County's Parade and we've got Brad who is in charge of sales over Sweetwater Homes. Thanks for coming on the show, Brad. You bet, thanks for having me here. Okay, so uh, a beautiful home here. Tell me a little bit about, about what you guys did. So this is our uh, Parade home that we did in Linden, 680 90, 770 North in the Linden Highlands subdivision. It's a craftsman style home. Uh, we built this home as a spec home. Uh, initially, For the people who don't know, that means that there wasn't a specific buyer involved, right? Yep, absolutely. Spec Home allows us to be a little bit more free-flowing with what we want to put into the home and try out new trends. Yeah, and so you went, uh, which is real popular, this real light colors and, and then bold colors with the, you know, with all the woods and stuff, right? Yep, abs absolutely. People are loving the more craftsman muted colors. Yeah, it almost did kind of a craftsman kind of contemporary style which is really, really cool. So uh, tell me a little bit about uh, what you guys did. So in this home right here, we looked for a home that we could build in this area that would be accommodating for an empty nester or for a large family. Um, this home has the kitchen, living and dining areas all open um, for conversation or for families. Um, we wanted to make sure that the lighting was good in this home, make sure that we had plenty of windows catching the natural light coming into the house. Uh, so in, headed into the kitchen here, tell me a little bit about this. So in the kitchen we decided to go with a quartz countertop um, in here and the island we did kind of has a waterfall edge to it which is becoming more popular. Uh, quartz is kind of trending up and granite's kind of trending down a little bit. And then obviously we did the, the light cabinets. Um, we actually did LED lighting above the cabinets that kind of accent and you can do that in 20 different colors there. So it's kind of fun to be able to, to do that. Yeah, it's really popular. So uh, tell me a little bit more. So they did these little different lights in here so they can just change it to whatever their mood is? Yeah, absolutely. So we can have it. Each one of the lights is independently can be changed. So in the bedrooms, in the bathroom, in the kids' rooms, um, you'll see as we go through the video here that there's uh, lighting above each one of the doors. They can use it as a night light. They can use it as uh, just something fun to have for their friends, those sorts of things that way. So it's just kind of unique. We did LED lighting, so it's a very efficient home that way. Yeah. So headed into the master bedroom, tell me a little bit about this one. So master bedroom's on the upper floor. Um, it's got double doors coming in, so it's kind of a grand entrance into the into the master uh, bedroom there. The master bathroom itself, separate vanities, his and hers, um, nice tile flooring, again, quartz on the countertops. You've got a Listello backsplash. Uh, this house actually has about a 10 foot by seven foot master shower um, with IO Digital programming, which is great. Um, and then we did a Wayne's coat of tile throughout. Um, and then the master closet, we ended up pushing this out the back of the house here. It's about a 15 foot deep by six to eight foot wide closet with plenty of natural light. And it's actually got a balcony on the right hand side and the left hand side. Oh, so there you see, you're walking right through. Yeah. That's great. And so uh, tell me about the location where you guys built. It looks like it's right up against the mountain. 
Yep, so this property backs a BLM property. It's in Linden up on the East Bench. is a great location. Um, we're all sold out of this subdivision here. Uh, we do have other subdivisions throughout the valley that people can visit or we're happy to do spot builds, but it was a very popular subdivision, pretty much sold out when it came online. Oh, that's great. So tell me a little bit about this room. So this is downstairs. This is kind of a family room downstairs um, that moves into the um, theater room. We decided to do a theater room, kind of a lime green color on the paint, kind of keep it fun with some LED lighting in there. This space is actually under the suspended slab garage area, and that's kind of one of our hallmarks. We do a lot of the suspended slabs and a lot of the theater rooms down there. That's cool. That's a great place to put them because it doesn't bother the rest of the house, right? That's right. Keep it quiet. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> okay. So heading into this room, what's this one? So this is a main level uh, kids entertainment room. It's actually wired for a theater room. Um, but we set up to be more of a kid's homework station. Mom, dad can keep tabs on the kids, kind of see what's going on there. And then in the, the laundry room is also on the main level, which allows for the main level uh, living to be able to do the kitchen and the formal living room and have your space. That way they will have to run up and down the stairs. Yeah, that's great. So great job on this home, Brad. So if somebody wanted to contact you, what would be the best way for them to reach you? You know, a couple different ways. They can go to our website, which is sweetwaterutah.com. They can see all of our floor plans and pictures there, or they can contact me directly, 801-636-3637. We're on site this morning here in Draper, Utah. We are just about ready to stand these posts on the footings here. And uh, on top of the footings, we, we put on some, uh, some structural knife plates, some red iron, and bolt those to the footings. You can see that the, laid, the uh, blade here comes up with a couple of uh, holes in it, which we will bolt to the, uh, the posts. Once the posts stand over the, the knife plate, it'll receive it here, we'll be able to bolt the uh, the post right to the knife plate, holding it secure. So not only steel knife plates, but there's several types of hardware that we're gonna be using on this project. For example, we've got uh, a couple of custom uh, blades here. One, uh, which our engineer called out and specced out with this design, uh, which is gonna go on top of the posts and the beams. But uh, as our engineers, uh, or our architects for that matter, as they were designing this and fitting this style, uh, this particular design, uh, into our drawings, we realized that there was some conflicts it was creating with where some rafters and beams were coming down on the posts. So we recreated or redesigned a new, uh, a new blade 
whole different design that will accommodate uh, more of the timber rafters coming down and resting on the posts so they can get fastened a lot more securely. With this particular uh, footing, we pre-poured some a conduit with some power to come through here. So we had to drill a, a hole through the steel to accommodate this power coming through. And uh, once that's done, we fish, we, we've got a, a hole drilled through the center of the post, and this wire will come up and allow us to have uh, power outlets, switches, and give us some lighting in the upper beams. So the posts are just about, uh, they're all cut and ready. We had to figure where that conduit was gonna come up uh, in the post, which is about here. And we ended up notching the bottom of the, the post so that the wire can go through here. And you can't see it, but the, the hole is drilled right through the center of where the knife plate's gonna go. So we had to bring that around. Uh, these uh, holes that we have on the bottom of all the posts will uh, go over the, the heads of the bolts that are holding the knife plates down. So we've just uh, recessed those out so it's the, the post sits flat uh, down to the, uh, the knife plate itself. So this project, we're gonna show a couple of different notches that we're gonna do. Typically, we have the dovetail notch that we designed, this interlocking joinery that's on most of our projects. However, uh, on this one, on some of these front posts, we've, we've made a bigger notch, a saddle notch, to allow one of the main support beams to protrude through the, the post and cantilever out four or five additional feet to allow some additional shade on the front side of the pavilion right next to the pool so they can have some shade right there. If you're experiencing lawn damage, you're either experiencing a water issue or a bug issue. How are you going to identify them as bugs is by simply pulling back on the grass in the dead areas. If it comes up easily, it's more than likely bugs. One of the main culprits for bug issues in lawns is grubs. Um, what you're going to do to identify grubs is by pulling up a sample of the dirt. So you're going to get your hands dirty a little bit. How you're going to identify the grub is they're half an inch to one inch in size. They're usually white to tan in color. Their heads can be light brown to an amber, um, and they're usually found in a C shape in the soil. Now, if you are experiencing this, it's time to call the experts.
So Bryce, we put in all this plumbing and uh, stuff for your future kitchen area. You want to tell us what's going to go in this area? Sure, Mark. We, what I planned here is you can see this, there's a floor sink right here, and we needed that for uh, ice machine or ice cream machines, and also for uh, drains for our sinks. And then we've got a gas line here that uh, we brought up because I'm going to put in a big pizza oven that I've got. Right. We'll be moving that in. And nice. uh, then we've also, uh, this would be for water connections and also for drains, you know, for, you know, for other sinks, hand sinks uh, that we would uh, have in here. So what we've got here is just a, a nice little area here that we plan to be able to uh, put in a, uh, a nice kitchen uh, for, uh, for events and for parties that we, uh, that we like to have here. And so um, that's, that's what we've got planned. Great, we've got the power in the pole here so you can pick up power along this wall and where you're putting in your kitchen equipment. We also drilled in future power on this. Um, so we've got power in the post that he can tie off of for his kitchen equipment there. So, so we've got a bunch of underground plumbing in this area. You want to tell us what your plan was for this side of the pavilion? Yeah, sure. What we've got planned right here is uh, this will be a women's restroom right here. And we've made it big enough so that, uh, uh, so that you can put a wheelchair in here so it's ADA uh, compliant. And then we'll also be big enough to have some benches and a place for people to sit and change clothes after they've been swimming. And then, of course, we have a men's restroom right here, uh, right between the two of them. Uh, we have an outdoor shower that we're putting in just on the outside. You can see where that's been plugged into that. Uh, then right here will be the utility uh, room. And uh, uh, that'll have, of course, the gas and electric and water heaters and everything that we need for that. And then right here on this angle, uh, we'll have uh, a big fireplace, and this fireplace, being on an angle like this, will be able to oh, nice. make it so everybody will, no matter where you sit in the building, you'll be able to fill and see the fireplace. And so that'll be, that'll be a lot of fun. And then uh, I think, you know, along with, uh, uh, with being able to have the fireplace here, uh, uh, having the fans will help to, you know, move the air around that we're able to put in. and. Uh, help to keep the building so that temperature regulate a little bit with uh, in the winter and in the summer. And, uh, in fact, we uh, like the building the way it looks so much right now. Uh, when you build it for us, you planned on, uh, you've, you've engineered it so that we can enclose it. And we had planned on putting, you know, glass uh, completely around this side, or glass doors and, and windows, and then around the sides. But we like it so much, we're not quite <laughs> sure if we want to do that or just leave it open like it is, because we really enjoy nice having it open. and. And we enjoy being able to see the waterfall and, and uh, as we finish the landscaping over on this side. So it'll be uh, a lot of fun just to have it open too. So uh, uh, that's, that's a lot of fun. We really like that. So our building that we've got now is actually a culmination of, of a few years of uh, thought and work. We actually had some plans before this uh, that we had completely engineered, uh, we'd even gone and had permits and everything ready to, uh, to build, but they just were lacking something. And what we really wanted was something that had the feel that we have now with these big timbers and the, this open timber frame feel. And uh, so we, uh, as we heard about Western Timber, we went and looked at some of their projects. Uh, we just liked the feel of it and knew that's what we wanted to have in our backyard. And so we contacted them and were able to work with them and express our ideas and things that we were trying to accomplish. And with uh, being able to work with them, we're able to come up with the plan that we have now. And uh, uh, it just has a great feel to it. We're uh, just really excited about the way it turned out. The craftsmanship was uh, tremendous. Uh, the workers that we were able to work with, uh, the cement crew, the electricians, and, and uh, 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 the plumbing and the excavation people have all just done a great job helping us to develop you know, this uh, project the way we wanted it to go. And so now what we have is a building that will be able to have some fun parties and events. Uh, I'm in the catering business and so we like to do parties and have people over and what we've got now is uh, as a pavilion that we can uh, have people come over and we can continue to do parties and events here. We'll have a nice spot for them. Uh, where it'll be covered and they'll be uh, protected from the elements if it's a stormy or a bad day. And um, uh, we just are really excited about the way it's turned out. And uh, I'd recommend Western Timber Frame to anyone. They've done a tremendous job for us. Uh, we've really enjoyed working with Mark. He's listened to our 
thoughts and our ideas and has shared some of his thoughts and we've been able to put those together to get something that we're just extremely happy with. Customers come to us here at Western Timber Frame with their dreams and their ideas and we work with them through the design process trying to maximize what they can get for their outdoor living space and get it in their budget. We do 3D drawings and renderings of working out the design process till we get just the right fill for their backyard. I think the Greens are really going to enjoy this pavilion and have some great parties here. I hope that I'm invited. It's always fun to get creative with our living spaces and it's great when we find businesses like Western Timber Frame that can turn our dreams into reality. This addition to their backyard is going to add both value and enjoyment to their lives. If you have any questions about ways to make improvements to your home or if you'd like to know more about the value of it, be sure to give me a call or visit our website. And remember, real estate's all about local knowledge and timing. And that's what you get here on Real Estate Essentials. So Darren, I hear about this new loan program that you can, if you want to finish out a basement or something, you can wrap it into your long-term financing. Yeah, it's a really, really great program. It uh, is actually a conventional loan program. Um, it, there has been a government version of this, but there's a conventional loan program where you can get um, a certain amount of money in addition to the purchase price of the home for improvements on the home at the time of closing. So. Um, if I was to go buy a, or look at a home that I wanted to buy, but I wanted to say finish the basement, well, I could purchase the home with this loan program, but with, if everything works out wise, or numbers wise, then they would also fund an additional amount of money to finish the basement. And how do they do that? So what they do is they will overfund the loan at the time of closing, so they'll fund the purchase price, and then they'll fund the remaining amount that's necessary to uh, pay the contractor to finish it out. Right. So they just hold that in escrow? Or something? Uh -huh, they hold that in escrow. And yeah, then, I assume you have to have a professional do this one. Correct, yeah, a contractor has to do it and there are limitations as to how much they can go above, uh, but it's pretty It's pretty liberal. It's really cool because yeah. now, because the thing about buying a house, if you're buying an existing home, you're never gonna find one that's perfect for that's you. Right. Yeah, you that's right, yeah, that's right. You There's always wanna change. you wanna change. That's right. I know me, that's the first thing I do when I buy a house, I go in and start changing everything I wanna, yeah, that's I wanna right. make the way I wanna have it. Heck, you do that to your office. I, yeah, I do it in my office, yeah, I do it in my loft, I do it everywhere, and that's the way I am. And so that's great because then you can just wrap it in long-term financing instead of having to come in a, yep. out of pocket with Yeah, it. absolutely, it's great. And it can be used for something as big as finishing a basement or landscaping. You know, putting in fences, pools, it can be used for um, upgrading carpet, kitchen appliances, I mean, you name it. it, it it's a really great program. I love it. It's great stuff. Yeah.